Evening folks. This recording is a bit of a special one. Um, we had an interview lined up with um, a gentleman who uh, you'll see shortly, Jason Gooley from Cisco. Um, and normally when we do an introduction, um, we, we start chatting about the, the subject at hand. Um, things go quite quickly and we move on quite quite uh, fast into those those topics. Jason took a little bit longer than normal to, to give his introduction and we kind of let him run with it because he's got such an interesting origin story um, that a lot of people can relate to that we thought there was a lot of value in letting um, you guys share that with us really to, so that you can hear the trials and tribulations and, the, and what it is to be a network engineer at a high level um, in modern times and, and we could all relate to that in terms of his passion, in terms of his um, the experiences of getting to where he was. Anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore. Watch the video. Hey folks and welcome. It's another uh, episode of um, uh, Within It Six and uh, we've got some of the usual usual faces around the uh, virtual table today. Um, but with one interloper in the middle, um, a, another special guest for you. Um, it's a young man by the name of um, Jason Gooley. I don't know if you've heard of him, um, but I'll let him introduce himself. Jason. Hello, my name is Jason Gooley. I work at Cisco as a technical evangelist, and I'm fortunate enough to know most of the people on this call and, uh, and, and author and write quite a bit of the Cisco Press books for certifications and things of that nature. And, partner with DevNet and a lot of the other folks within Cisco to, to help people and give back to the community. So one um, uh, godfather of programmability, so I understand. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big that title to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me turn right every time somebody says it. <laughs> Jason, next uh, time you introduce yourself, you start off and you say, I'm author Jason Gooley, five people. <laughs> Okay, and then you roll into the rest. You don't, yeah, don't, 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 no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Do not, do not get him started on his book again, please, Jason. Please. <laughs> He's going again. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry. Which book is that? Oh, oh, apparently, I Derek. I have to know. I have to know, Derek. Have have to tell me, Derek, about this. Book. Christmas for Christmas, everybody's getting a book. It's three dollars forty-eight cents on Amazon. <laughs> if I add gift wrapping, it doubles to six dollars. <laughs> but everybody's getting a book. <laughs> it's not even got his name on the front cover. I get more on your gift wrapping than I do in royalties. <laughs> <laughs> was, so, <laughs> so, so, Jason. Let's just bring things to order a little around the table. Um, <laughs> you've, you've, mate, you've, um, you, I guess you're kind of a bit of a, a role model in, in a sense to a lot of the community because you're not just coming into this whole DevNet thing as a programmer and all the rest of it. You started as a, as a network guy, the same as, as everyone in, you see in front of you here, and you've kind of worked your way through to this right after joining Cisco. Do you want to give us a little bit of, the history or your background and how you how you've come to come to arrive where you are really sure uh it's a weird story uh but i'm going to throw it out there anyway um you know uh so so what my i was i was 14 years old my best friend was 13 and his mom was a computer analyst right and this is the windows 31 311 for work groups days with novell network 3 and all this like way back in the day stuff right and I remember one day he comes over and he's like, dude, you got to come over. You got to check this stuff out. So he starts showing me Windows. He starts with Windows 3.1 and he starts showing me DOS. And then he's like, and check this out. And he brings out this book. And somewhere I still have it over here. It's down there at the bottom. Um, QBasic. He's like, check out this QBasic programming book. And I'm like, man, I don't have time for that. Like, it, I was 14. As a 14-year-old, you're like, man, I got way better things to do, man. I'm going to go cause some ruckus. I'm going to get out here. I'm going to ride a go-kart. Yeah, yeah. I was going to do all this stuff, you know. And then, uh, so he kept teaching me these things. And my first programming language that I ever touched was QBasic, right? And when I say touched, it was very minimal, right? So I learned how to program a circle, right? So this thing would just go, and it would just show a circle. And then I figured out how to get it to go repeat. 
and just do the circle over and over again. And I was like, yeah, man, yeah. And then I figured out the whole if then go to thing. And then it was the circle. Just, it was just a white circle. It just kept going like this. I'm like, this is awesome. Then I could change the colors. And then, then I figured out that you could tie in the PC speaker and make a siren. So it just went. <laughs> then I finally got to go. <laughs> and that was literally the only thing I ever did in Cubasic, right? <laughs> that was all I ever did. Uh, I like, so, right, I'm like, I don't just, have any patience for this. <laughs> but right. So, so rewind probably about 10 years from that when, when I was sure. doing that kind of thing. And what we always used to do was go into the computer shops on a Saturday. And we used to lock up all of the computers in stores doing just exactly that with the. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you do, right? And, and it, that's, that's it, right? Clearly, it's um, it's set the stage for something bigger, right? Well, and I never would have thought, right? I mean, because so I started with that, and you know, I, I really didn't have patience for the whole programming thing, and I got really interested in the being able to do stuff through DOS and Windows and create file structures and folders, and and then we got into networking because my best friend's mom was uh, ran this network, and it was all Novell, it was all BNC connectors. And she's invited us to come and help her, right? So I, I started learning networking at 14 and going through all these different things. I'm like, this is amazing, you know? And, um, you know, I started, started like, you know, I, you know, I'm going to start building my own computers. So we started building our own computers and selling them. And, we were, I mean, we were 14 and 13 years old, you know? And we just really took a liking to it. And then I started getting in more into the networking side of it. And he, he kind of went down the sysadmin security path. So now he's doing Cisco security. And I just kind of kept focusing on networking. And I heard this thing, and uh, this is so funny because, you know, I heard this thing, well, if, if, you, if you get the Cisco certification, you will make a lot of money. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And so I started digging into this thing, right? What is, this, what is Cisco and what does Cisco certification mean? Well, there's a CCNA, a network, of, Cisco Certified Network Associates, you make over a quarter of a million dollars a year. And if you're a CCMP, you'll make like 350, 375 a year. And then if you were CCIE, and at this point there was less than 500 of them, right? 500 or 1,000 in the world, right? You'll make more than the president. And I'm like, I want that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go for my CCIE. I haven't even I hadn't even touched it yet, right? I'm like, I don't even know. All I know is that's what I want to do. And it's got like to be got to be. It's got to be true. Just look around the table. All of these guys have got a CCIE. And, and look at them. But, but we're all sharing that the president. <laughs> <laughs> richer, than, richer than the first couple presidents, maybe now at this point. But that's about it. Um, so I, I, I found out that there was a Cisco thing, and I, I heard that there were some schools on it, and there was a there was a vocational school that was out about an hour west of where I lived, and essentially they were teaching intro to Cisco, which would get you eventually close semi close to get your CCNA. Well, they didn't give you any equipment. And they had their racks of, of whatever with the 2501 routers and the 1900 series switches and all this, <laughs> but you couldn't you couldn't do any of it at home. So I'd have to go to the school. I started doing that and learning intro intro networking, and uh, I bought the Todd Lamley Cybex CCNA Study Guide uh, Kit. Okay. And I, I'm telling you, I still have all this sitting right behind me. It was the two book kit, red yeah. and black, right? red, black, and white, and it had the virtual simulator yeah. and it had the the CCNA kit. So I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for this, dude. I'm going to do it. And this was back when, this is way back. Like, I'm pretty sure it was only one test for the CCNA back then. And then it was before the whole ICND, all that stuff. Wait, I mean, this was, you're talking 97 or 8, I started going for that CCNA. So I think I got it in 98 or 9 or something like that. And um, I just, I, I fell in love with this stuff. So here my, here my dad is at home. He's a landscaper, right? He runs his own, own business as a landscaper, and I'm just a hooligan. I'm doing all kinds of stupid stuff, right? And, and I go, Dad, I, I, need, I need some money because I, I want to buy <laughs> these routers. And he, like, he didn't know what the hell I was even talking about, right? But this was like right at the height of eBay starting, right? And on eBay, they had CCNA study kits, which would be two 2501 routers with the 60-pin serial back-to-back. And a 1900 series switch. And then if you had a lot of money, because those are like four or five grand, if you had like seven grand, you get like some ad trans, CSU, DSU stuff, and all this other stuff. And we didn't have that. So I'm like, Dad, I need $5,000. I need to buy the CCNA study kit so I can go for this, this exam. And he looked at me, you know, he goes, why? 
I go, I, you know, it just really interests me. I, you know, I was doing all this stuff with my friend Luke, and uh, we were we're doing we're we're learning Windows and networking, and I've been helping his mom, and it's just it's just something I'm really passionate about, right? And he just looked at me and he goes, okay, and you know. Me and my dad at the time, I was a teenager, we didn't get along very well, I was in a lot of trouble, I kind of got booted out of high school. Uh, there's all these things, right? And when I went to him and I said, look, this is something I really want to do, he said, okay, and he bought it, right? And uh, I just I just hit it hard. I just kept, I, I, everything that I read in that book, I know you could do some, you can do some of it in the virtual simulator, but you're limited, right? I did everything I could read in that book that I could translate into that iOS code, and I made it work on that those routers. And I think it was like iOS 10 or something way back in the day, right? Yeah. Um, and I just, I just everything I, that I could get to work, I would practice, and everything else, I, I just I couldn't get to work. I'd let it go, you know. And it, it kind of progressed on, and then I heard about the CCNP, and then I was like, you know, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go take my CCNP. I saved up some money, Wait, and I went to a school. Jason, did yes. you use this book for your CCMP studies? Oh, no. I did not. I did not. I did not. Um, I was just checking. I, I, used, I used the rest of the red, the Cybex uh, CCNP kit. So I got those. I got B, uh, B, B, C, uh, BSCI for Building Tables, uh, Cisco Inter Networks, Switching Support, and Remote Access. <laughs> those were the ones that I used. And then I went and uh, I, I just kept studying and practicing and and I got my CCNP, I think, in 2000 or 2001 or so, so, something around there. And uh, I'm like, awesome. And, and I'm, I have no choice but now to go and take my CCIA written exam because that's the next logical progression. So I took it. And, and believe it or not, on that one I passed. I, I was surprised. This was way back. I passed that one. And I, I mean, I failed exams here and there. Every, you know, everybody goes through it. But I, I, I passed that one. And I think probably was not a good thing that I passed that one on my first try, the, the written exam, because at that point I'm like, well, then the next logical thing is to go take the lab. <laughs> well, my dad had no money, and I and, and I, we, we, I just didn't have any money, right? So I, we waited and waited and waited, and I had to renew that thing a couple times. And, and finally I'm like, all right, I'm going to go take the lab exam. And I think I really got serious about it in 2004. And it was uh, CCIE version 3.0, and I'm like, I'm going to go take it. And it was 12, 12. It was either 1,200 or 1,250 at the time, but I had to pay for it all out of pocket, you know. And nobody, nobody would give me any money, and I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to save up and do this. So I took it, and I got creamed. I mean, I was, I, I, I boom, knocked on my butt, and I just lay in there, figuratively. <laughs> I get up and I go, me, me. <laughs> How very rude. <laughs> 30 days later. What the? See? <laughs> when I passed the written on the first try. 30 days later. <laughs> All right. All right, I got this. <laughs> 30 days later, no. I take it again. Four times. Four times. <laughs> in a row, right? Never doing anything different to change what I was studying. Never change anything other than the fact that I got defeated. I got to get up and do it again. I got defeated. I got to do it again, right? And finally, after the fourth time, I'm just like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm like, I, I got to figure out what I'm doing wrong. And, and I knew in my heart of hearts that I couldn't give up. I'm not a give up type of person. So I'm like, I'm going to take a year off and I got to, I got to refigure this out. And I'm like, you know, I don't know. I, all right. I, yeah, I'll take a year off. And then I, I gave it a few months and then they changed it to 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> and all this other stuff and I'm like no so I started the whole process over again I basically had to, I kind of had to start over you know and uh, I I didn't have the the funds for I and E right I didn't start with I and E a lot of folks just think I and E and then they go and I had to basically do the the, the carousel of every single provider that was the cheapest first um, but but I learned a lot in that you know you know it, it's it sticks sometimes when you're you're troubleshooting like misprints in documents or topology diagrams when you're trying to learn and the IPs don't match and nothing's working and you're trying to figure it out and all reality was the frame relay switch they had set up was not configured correctly and you don't have access to it. 
right? So you you second guess everything you're doing and everything you're going through when you're when you're trying to learn these things. And finally, at the end, I was like, well, I'm going to do the 360 program thing. I'm going to try. I heard about that. Let's try it. So I went back. I started doing that, and uh, ended up Narvik was one of my instructors, and I just kind of went through some of that stuff and. It still took me three tries to pass that on my, I passed on my third attempt. But what was interesting was I go in there, you know, I hit it, I got 50% right on troubleshooting, and uh, I only completed five questions. So I knew that I was doing good. I'm like, all right, well, I got 50% on troubleshooting, I'm doing all right. And then uh, I kind of, I, I failed config. And so I'm like, all right, well, I, I got close on troubleshooting, let's see what I'm gonna do. I go back, I do it again, you know, about two months later. And I got 45% on troubleshooting, but I had knocked off, I marked off nine things that I fixed, you know, and then I passed config. So I'm like, what the, you know, it's so close. And then a, a friend of mine, so Anthony Sequeira and Terry Vincent, I have to call them out because, uh, you know, Terry and I and Anthony were all talking before, back in the old IP expert days, I, I worked for them for a brief period of time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was sitting there talking to them like, I can't figure out what's going on and why I'm, I'm not passing it. I'm literally finding problems, fixing them, and then I pass config, so I don't know what's up, you know. And so one of the things Terry did, we, we got on a WebEx, believe it or not, and he's like, all right, configure an MPLS network using these things. I'm like, okay. So the whole time I'm doing it, right, I configure everything. He's talking to me and just, just shooting the breeze, and I configure it, and I had it done. Like, done. It was like four or five minutes, the whole end -end MPLS network built. He goes, fantastic. I'm going to take control, break it, and then give it back to you. You have three minutes to find the problem and three minutes to fix the problem. If you don't fix it in three minutes, you have to write down what it is, move on to the next question. I said, okay. And he went through, and it was something silly like uh, the P router in the middle, he had turned off MPLS uh, advertised labels, right? So I'm like, okay. I went in there and I found it. it was I found it like, I was crazy. It was like 45 seconds or something. They're going through, because I started on like the PE router, didn't find anything, went to the P router and I found it, right? Uh, just by doing some show commands, and um, I, I found that this was what was going on. It said there was no labels, and I was like, all right. So I went up and I looked at it, and I said, oh, you turned off label advertisement. So I just said, okay, MPLS LDP advertise labels, enter. And he goes, you failed. And I go, what do you mean I failed, you know? Uh, I found the problem. I fixed it in, like, less than three minutes. What do you mean? He's like, what did you just do to the config? I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, go back and look at the config, you know, when, when it's, what did you do to it? So I said, well, it says no MPLS LDP advertised labels. And I turned it back on. He's like, yeah, what does it do? And I thought about it and I go, well, it removes that. He's like, yeah, you're not allowed to remove config. And I sat back in my chair like, what? She goes, what else could you have done? I go, what? MPLS LDP advertised labels to access list peers? He's like, yeah, why didn't you do that? I go, who in the hell would? right? Who would do the more complex thing than just turning it back off, right? Or turning it back on? And he goes, that's why you're not passing. And I sat back in my chair like, it was like, oh, you no, know, because I think back to some of the things and now these exams are totally dead, right? So I can, I can think back to like the 3.0 days or something like that where, you know, some VLANs needed to be added to a trunk in order for it to work. And I think I'm being slick in the troubleshooting section, just like, oh, screw it, I'm just gonna add all the VLANs, right? I'm just gonna add all, allow all. Nope, allow specifically what you're supposed to, you know. So it, it's very much an academic exam as, as it is a technical exam, right? I mean, you really have to, and I didn't know any of that. So when that happened, it clicked, I went back, I passed, right? And everything, how I looked at the exam completely changed. Like every time I looked at a question, then it would be, how else can I do specifically what I'm looking at? You know, I remember removing access lists that had, you know, Telnet being denied, but instead I could have went before that and did a permit. There's, all, you know, there's all these things, and you you don't know that until somebody says something, and that's kind of one of the problems with, um, you know, going into this long long winded story was when you're starting out on your own and you're learning and you're studying and you're reading from books and nobody's there to help you. There's nobody there, right? I mean, especially back then, there was no real videos and I&E and all these things. It was like very minimal stuff, you know? And I mean, if you're lucky to have like LAN switching and routing volume one and two and or one at the time, it wasn't even two, you know? So it's like, sometimes it's okay to just be like, hey, you know what, can I get a little bit of guidance? Because I think 
I think as a community, one of the things that has, has I've greatly seen is, you know, going forward is that everybody's willing to help. It's just you got to reach out to them. And I've not asked anybody to help me on something and have them not been more than willing to help me in this, right? And I think you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know who to ask for help or what to do when you're kind of going at it alone. So that was my long-winded way of saying uh, community and things like that are very, very important, right? I mean, study groups, stuff like that. You know, I'm always, always one of these hard-headed guys who thought, well, I could, just, I could do this. No, I probably could 14 attempts later if I wanted to go down that path. But it was easier to say, hey, what am I doing wrong, right, from people who have already done it right. And I think just being vulnerable enough to ask that or tell your story to just get, you know, familiar with people so they know what you're going through is probably the best way to move forward with the least amount of friction, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So fast forward after that, I, had, uh, I passed my uh, CCIE, routing and switching, uh, March 29th of 2013, July 8th, I was working at Cisco. So when you talk about so it's a, it's a, how it's a direct consequence. Your life. So. <clears throat> yeah. so happy anniversary then, happy anniversary then. That's, yeah, uh... thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I, when, you, when, you when you think through, yeah, no doubt, right? Uh, when, you, when you think through um, how this can completely change your life, I knew, I mean, when you're going for it, you kind of know what this thing's going to mean. But nobody else seems to get it outside of the industry. And when you're when you're fighting that path alone, you're I mean, nobody understands why you're spending thousands, I mean, thousands of hours in a basement or somewhere studying. Nobody gets it, right? Because they don't understand. First of um, all, not and, everybody can do that. First of all, that's that's the one exactly. thing that, that's not everybody and, and in fact, I found myself, you know, not being I wonder what's on television. You know what I mean? So it's hard to study for eight, twelve hours at a time. You know what I mean? So no, you're right, it's, it's not you, and, and that's a great thing. And, and you know, stamina is like you. By the time when you, but when you're ready for a CCIE, you have to basically be cool to sit there for like 10, 11 hours because the exam might be eight, but then there's like an hour lunch, and there's a couple times you need to take a break, and then there's all the time you sit in the lobby before that, and then all the time after when your head feels like it's going to explode, and then so it, it's like a 12, 13, 14 hour marathon that you're sitting through before you go, you know, pass out or do whatever you're going to do, have a few beverages. Uh, but it's, 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 it's a the lot. The time after you're done to when you get the results. That is well, that's the most painful time. Uh, so it's so funny that you say that. Like, cause, so <laughs> having gone through all this, the, the silly things of being hard-headed enough to just keep running at it but not changing anything, I think now, I, I, I'm being honest, I wasn't ready to be a CCIE dude. I, I wasn't. And, and, I, and, I'm, and, I, and I mean that from a, like, a maturity level, right? I mean, did I know the stuff? pretty well but at the same time it's like eh, I wasn't ready as a person as an engineer to be where I'm at or to get to to go through all that stuff I wasn't ready you know and um, I think I was shrugging off some of the, the you know when I was being young starting all this very young I, w I, I was fortunate enough that things I just kept making things work and I kept passing the A plus certification doing all this stuff and going you know past the CCNA and the CCNP and and now I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go and take the next one. And I think every once in a while you need a little, Put you, you know, in your place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You, you know, and, and I, I, I think Rick James got a hold of me. <laughs> 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 um, but, but at the same time, you know, I, I went through all that and I, I vowed to myself, I was never, ever going to go for another CCIA, another certificate. That was all I wanted was that was all I ever wanted before there was any other track, right? That's all I wanted was routing and switching. That was it. And uh, so I get to Cisco, and um, this is hilarious. So I, I go to Cisco Live for the first time ever in Orlando in 2013. I started July 8th, uh, officially started. But technically before that, like two, three weeks before that, was Cisco Live US and, uh, in Orlando. So I went as a Cisco employee who had not started yet, who just passed their CCIE, who first Cisco Live. I went in there, my head felt like it was going to burst, right? So I walked through the fancy CCIE door and the certification lines. I'm like, holy crap, I can go through the separate door. And then I'm like, I'm like, wow, there's like free chocolate and goodies. So I go over and I'm like eating all this stuff and I grab a plate and I sit down. And I'm like just taking it all in. Like I'm at my first Cisco live as a CCIE working for Cisco. I haven't started yet. Holy crap, this is crazy. So then this guy sits down in front of me and he goes, hey, how's it going? I'm like, good. You know, you mind if I sit? And I was like, no, sure. So we're eating and talking. 
She goes, so, what, so what's your story? I go, oh, you know what? I just started at Cisco. I haven't even started yet. That's for CCIE. This is like, oh, so what, what's your plan? I go, I don't know. I think, I think I might go after data center next, get my CC, CCIE and data center. He's like, <laughs> he's like yeah, you, you could do that. You could do that. You should get your CCDE. And I'm like, CCDE? I'm like, isn't that that new one that, like, nobody That's has, nobody knows about. about or anything? That's what so, I'm talking about. <laughs> Who was sitting behind you? Was, it Darren? was Darren sitting behind you? <laughs> so no. So here it is. He's like, he's like, if, if you if you want if you want to change your mind and never go for the CCD, let me know. I'm like, okay. So like, who who are you, right? So he flips his badge up. Russ White. White. Russ White. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with Russ White. I'm like, oh, duh, you know. So as we're sitting there talking, uh, and and God rest his soul, man. Uh, Bo Williamson walked up. And he started talking to us, and we're all standing there talking, and um, and I'm like, you know, I, I read your book, too. I'm like, I can't believe that I'm sitting here in the same room with all these people, you know. I was kind of starstruck, like, you know, I've read all your stuff. This helped me to get to where I'm at. And, and the fact that every single one of these people that I met was just as cool as having this kind of conversation, and that was like, that was like the key for me. I was like, you know what, I've been, we've, been, we've all probably been somewhere where somebody was, snooty or wouldn't share information or was rude or, or something to that effect and it doesn't help anybody you know so i i thought to myself on it i'm like all right you know i'll, I'll think about the ccd you know i'll really think about how i can help people and, and stuff like that and then uh i, I started going for the ccde and it was funny because i had not thought about it at all for like a year it was like 20 it was 20 end of 2014 and my boss my manager comes to me i was an sd at the time he comes over to me and he goes hey we want you to get your CCDE. And I'm like, what? Why? He's like, well, it just aligns with your job role and everything, and nobody in the Midwest has one. You would be the first, and blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. He goes, he goes we'll pay for everything. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll start going for it. So I called Russ up. I go, hey, man, uh, remember me? <laughs> um, and he, he helped me get started in it. And, you know, and, uh, and then I talked to Brian McGann as well, and he said, uh, you know, if you're going for your CCDE, you should probably maybe try to attempt this, the service provider CCIE because it's you need to kind of know all that stuff uh, to know your D, to get your DE and I knew one was theory and one was actually hands on really knowing the implementation pieces of it but I was like all right well what the heck you know so I went through and I, I started studying for my my CCIE service provider just so I can understand what the heck I was reading for all this. Uh, you know, definitive MPLS designs and optimal routing design, We're trying to figure out what all this stuff means, you know. So I started going through service provider. And the funny thing is that they did was they, they were canceling the exam and changing it over to 4.0, right, or 5.0. I think it was 4.0 or 5.0. Now i got to go back and look. But uh, it, so in 2015, they only had one date available. And it was basically like May, was it May 22nd? I think it was May 22nd. Um, or January 22nd or something like that and uh, I'm like well I'm gonna schedule it and if I pass cool if I don't then what the heck I still know the knowledge so I can get my DE you know and because there was they were changing it and they had you know one space I, 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 I hate to say this and it sounds horrible but I didn't think I was gonna pass and at the same time I kind of didn't care I cared I wanted to pass don't get me wrong but I didn't expect it I kind of figured I wouldn't pass and I would just go for my DE and I get this email, right? And, and, and Derek, you get, you get what I'm going back to that email, man. Because when you get the email that, and you, you get the things, your score report's ready, and when you open it and, and not pass so many times, you see the actual score report, and you're like, oh, man, it's a, I was hoping it would, I would pass, right? It's like, oh, man. So I get this email address, or this email is sent to me, and it says, you know, here's your score report. And I was like, crap. You know, because it's been like three years before I passed, and I think it still says your score report. And then you go and log in, and it tells you what's going on. And um, I log in and says, congratulations, you passed, right? Now, you're going to laugh at this story. And then I, I've only told a couple people this, but I'm going to tell you because it's funny. It's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you because it's funny. It's being um, recorded. <laughs> it's just being recorded, but I'm doing it anyway because it's just so funny. And you're thinking back to it. So I took my exam and I left. The, I left the exam place and I went and I had Mongolian barbecue, okay? It was like where they cook all the meats and the... 
yeah, stuff yeah. with like drumsticks and they cook all the stuff and I'm a big spicy guy so I had to put sriracha in it and all there and then like oh they sold sushi too so I got me a spicy tuna roll and I got all the stuff okay I kill it all and I leave and I got the worst heartburn I had ever had in my life man to the point like I, I'm literally now on a quest driving around RTP like if I don't find ice cream or a shake or something I'm gonna lose my mind right and I pull up to the strip mall. I'm, I'm just like frantically driving around. I pull up to the strip mall and there's like one of these do-it-yourself yogurt joints, right? <laughs> Dude, I didn't even talk to the lady. I just walked in, grabbed the cup, filled it up, and just started eating the yogurt. Like right in front of this lady. I'm like, I swear to God, I'll pay for it. Uh, I'll buy two heartburn. And I like ate this this thing and then I, I finally it, like it, it went away. So then I like I filled it up and got all the, the goodies to put on it and paid them paid them and apologized and also I felt all right I felt better so I drove back to the hotel <laughs> and I get this email alert that I got the score report so I go in and I at the time I had to RDP into my home desktop VPN into my work laptop or work desktop to get the stupid CSCO login ID thing to come back to my laptop to log into the CCIE portal and see what happens. It says, here it is, congratulations, you passed, right? <laughs> so going through all of that, like a little kid, I, I, I'm kidding you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding you, I should say, I start jumping on the bed like I'm a little kid, dude. I mean, I'm jumping on the bed, flapping around. I'm like, I can't believe I just passed. How, how did that even happen? I'm, bounce, I'm flipping around like a fish on this bed. So excited, man. And then I sit up and I go, <laughs> and I had to run to the bathroom, and I got sick. I got sick because of all the food and the ice cream and everything. I got sicker than a dog, man. I was so sick. Uh, and I could barely even talk because I was so sick. And then, and then I'm just sitting there laughing, sitting next to the toilet, laughing. Um, and then finally I compose myself, and Narbic calls me. Uh, on my cell phone and i'm like i go yeah hey what's up man he's like i just wanted to call and congratulate you and i'm like the only person that knows two people know the proctor was standing there and my wife was there and that and me that's it he's somehow he already knew and i'm like that's just narvik you know i'm like I'm like, thank you very much. And uh, so then, you know, here I am at Cisco, and I, I, got, I went for the DE three times. I got 60% each time, and I was getting ready to continue down that path to, to, to finishing it and everything. And every time I went, uh, we ended up having a baby. So going through, like, IVF and all these different things. So I have two beautiful children. One's five years old, timing, and uh, and one is, is going to be two here in a couple months. And I just couldn't get – and then they changed it. And then they had that big thing that happened where they canned the whole thing for a while. And I was just getting ready to go take it then. And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't do that. And then and now I'm just like, I don't have I don't have a lick of time, man, you know. And uh, it, it's crazy. So I, I end up at Cisco as a serv uh, as an SE covering a, some accounts. And one of them was a company that I came for before, which was Empire Carpet, which is a big carpet company. It's nationwide. And I left there. And I, I'm working at Cisco as an SE, and then all of a sudden I, I'm, I find myself doing all these deep dive design conversations with customers and a lot of enterprise networking. And it was right when IWAN was coming out, and then I was on the worldwide IWAN adoption team, also as an SE, still doing that. And then things kept changing, and um, you know I, I ended up taking a different role as a technical solutions architect for our worldwide enterprise networking sales company, sales department. So. The people who handle everything for EN, so you're talking routing and switching, wireless, Wi-Fi 6, and I, I do enablement now. So now my job is basically building training content and curriculum for our SEs and our partners and enabling them on how to learn our products. And it's crazy how everything pivoted and shifted, and, and now I'm doing enablement and training, which, you know, is, is, is kind of nuts, but that's just kind of where my, my job fell. And, and And all the books, the books was kind of a, it was, it was an interesting story, and, I, and, and, you know, so there was a guy named Ryan Tischer who I had uh, written the first book with, and we were, he, honestly, the first time I ever met this guy, uh, he comes into my boss's office, and he sits down, and I, I was so proud that I had passed my CCIE. I have the CCIE OGO laptop messenger bag, you know, with my logo on and my number, and he comes in, and he goes, 38,000, huh? Man, don't give those to anybody now. 
It's like, that was the first thing this guy ever said to me. I'm like, what? So I, I poke him back, uh, and, you know, I'm like, I'm like, oh, so what do you have? He's like, oh, Ronnie was switching 11,000 something or another. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah. I go, well, I have two. And then he kind of just like, you know, and then next thing you know, we're, you're, we're talking, and he's an ACI. He was an ACI guy. So he came into my boss's office to try to start working with us to try to, to, to pitch ACI. And then one day, we, we had, Cisco has this thing called Sales Champion and Chairman's Club, where it's like the top 10%, top 1% of the company, and then they send you to, like, Miami or something or Hawaii for, 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 for like, doing good in sales or, like, doing things for giving back. So I got nominated because of – the book and all these other different things. Well, actually, before the book, I got nominated for a bunch of different things, and I go to the party, and this guy's at the party. It's the only time I've seen him after that, right? We go, we go to this party, and he's like, hey, man, hey, I got an idea. And I go, yeah, what's up? He's like, I'm thinking about writing a book on network programmability, and I know all the data center stuff. He's like, do you want to do all the service provider route switch stuff? And I'm thinking to myself about the first time I ever met this guy, what he said to me, and I'm like, oh, you know, oh, no, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's like, it'd be really cool, you know, you know, we can, we can do this book, and he's like, maybe just write a few chapters and whatnot. I'm like, all right, yeah, let me think about it, you know. So I put some thought into it, I'm like, all right, well, what the heck. Did you really say, let me think about it? Yeah, I did, I did, I sure did. I went back and I asked my wife, I'm like, can I write a book so you don't kill me? And uh, I talked to the executive editor over there and, uh, you know, just talked to him about the project and what, what he thinks, and he's like, you know, it's the first programmability book there is, it would be probably good to get on it. So I said, what the heck, you know, I'll do it. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing, man. I'm going to be completely honest, and I told the DevNet folks this before, like, in some of the interviews, I had to learn a lot of this stuff to, to put it in context for service provider, NSO, and, and you know, APIC EM and all these different things. Like, I, I was learning some basic stuff, but I didn't know the APIs or any of that stuff or any of the tools. So I had to kind of learn it on the fly to write the book. So but all that, I did. All that all that Q basic stuff you did back in the day, you see. All I remember that. that, that, in, that right. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, like, oh, I'm like, this is way better than a circle that makes noise, you know? And uh, that kind of was, that was kind of like the catalyst, right? So DevNet was just getting popular. This book was out in like 20, we finished it in 2015. I think it published it September and early of 2016. And, or 20, uh, yeah, so it was about 2016. And DevNet was just starting to get popular, and we we started saying, hey, look, and it was it was it was the perfect case story. Here's the book, you know, that we're putting out for all these different study materials. I I was fortunate enough to help create the network programmability engineer specialist exam with a lot of really cool people here at Cisco. So then that became required reading for that, and then they started, you know, we're going to put some programmability stuff on some of these exams, and then it was you know on the learning list for for learning at Cisco, and I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know. And then it was, hey. My buddy Brad reaches out to me, and he's a good he's a good guy. And Brad Edgeworth reaches out to me. He's like, "Did you want to help write the CCIE CCDE evolving technology study guy?" I'm like, "No, no, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, because that other one was a nightmare. Because you know the process to go through writing a book is not very easy. You know, I'm like, no, I don't. He's like, come on, it's you know it's going to be a three chapter ebook. You know, you write you know you write basically your programmability stuff, and you know you're published again. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, all right, fine. And he's a, he's persuasive. So I said, all right, what the hell? I'll, I'll take all 12 cents that I get, and, and I'll put it to buying some new pens and and stuff to write this book. So I said, okay, what the heck? And I did it. And then that kind of it spiraled into Brad's like, hey man, <laughs> you, you want to? <laughs> I'm like, like, wait, 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 wait. He's like, yeah, well, well, we're 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 thinking about doing like the you know the CCIE CC, or CCMP CCIE Enterprise Core Book for this. I'm like, oh man, you <laughs> know. And it just it just kept going. So I helped him with that, and then. I got so, the idea, you know. So, uh, so this was for the new certs, right? Yeah. It's a new one, right? And then yeah, I get this idea of writing a second edition to our book, right? Uh, the, the, the first programmability book. But um, because I guess at the time somebody else had put in and submitted for some programmability stuff that they, they I couldn't rewrite that because it would be, it would be two of the same content. So I just said, well, what about, what about SD WAN? I'm like, yeah, no, nobody's doing anything on SD-WAN. I'm like, really? <laughs> what, what about software-defined access? And you're like, no, not for software-defined access. And I'm sitting like, this is what I do every day is these two topics. And I'm like, I'm like, 
why don't you send me over the proposal form, you know? <laughs> so he sends it over, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe one of these is going to get accepted. So I submitted for both, the SDA and uh, uh, software-defined access and software-defined LAN, and then they both get accepted. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm not writing this thing alone. So I'm like, I, I'm getting some friends of mine who are, are really good in the industry and, and to help me write these books. And um, and then I'm sitting there thinking, cool, you know, I can, I can, I can do this. We can make it through. And I, I tried to space it out where it was like a year, a year and a half of like writing the book and then two months off in between the other book. And then, uh, and then I was approached by DevNet. Uh, hey, we want to write a book. And boom. So I submitted for the DevNet Associate book. And then I, I you know, one thing when, you, when we talk, when we go back to talking about failing or knowing when to say when, uh, four books in one year, don't do it. Don't do it, man. <laughs> don't do it. Do not do it. So, well, on I, top I, of this, wait, hold on, Jason. On top of this, do you have a day job? I do have a day job and kids. And, and, and kids. Wife, right? it's, it's crazy, you know. So, and then, you know, you're not writing books during the day. So, you have to do it all at night on weekends. And it's a, it's really hard because you're spending a lot of time away. And with them running around, I, I basically had to go to Starbucks for a majority of the time, put on some, some you know, yeah. headsets and just crank away on writing chapters. And, uh, so the DevNet Associate book, I had submitted for that, and then um, it, it got to the point where, you know, we needed to get another author in to try to pull it in, and we, we tapped my friend Chris Jackson, who's actually a DSC at Cisco, and he's doing the uh, DevNet Associate videos as well for Pearson, and I said, hey, you want to be on this? Wink, wink. And he's like, sure. So I get him on, and then part of me's like, I'm getting really overwhelmed because there was, like, a lot going on at day job work and then a lot of these four books, and I was just like, dude, I don't know if I can take this. So I call Chris and I go, have I got an opportunity for you? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> how about I give you lead author on the book? We do a little bit of royalty magic. You get 13 cents instead of 12 cents. And uh, basically you be lead author and then you take over the PMing and project management of this book and I'll just be a contributor, contribute my, my chapters. But I don't have this stress and anxiety of managing author teams and, you know, and all that stuff for that project. And so we did it. And uh, that's almost done. All the other books are actually written. They're going through technical editing and review right now. I'm working on them all right now, actually. Um, and that one, I think there's like, the DevNet Associate book, I think it has like four more chapters to be finished and submitted. And then there's technical review for that. And uh, we were trying to target all of them coming out, Cisco Live. Something's shifted, obviously, because of what's going on. But soon, in the next few months-ish, uh, all of those books will be published, and obviously the CCNP one was published in uh, December 26. So, uh, and then here I am now, um, you know, stuck at home in, in a good way. I think it's good because I, I get to catch up with a lot of cool folks, and I get to do a lot of projects and editing of chapters and stuff that I would normally not be able to do. Um, but so that's kind of the process. Was I, I started off. You know, 14 years old thinking about computers because a buddy of mine told me about it. You know, uh, his name is Luke Kalin, and now he's a big Cisco security guy. And it, I just kept going with it and kept loving it and stayed in in the networking and then found out about Cisco and really wanted to make more than a president. It uh, <laughs> hadn't happened yet. Especially this president. I don't think I'll ever make more than yeah, that president. Yeah, no chance of that. Uh, so, right? But... Uh, <laughs> You know, so I just stuck with it, and I was, it's shocking. I think i think it matured, and I hate to sound cheesy, but I, I think the process matured me, the, the getting knocked on your butt, you know, realizing that, you know, not everything is easy. Uh, and, you know, there are people out there who are fortunate to pass a lot of these on the first time, and, you know, based, based on what I just told you, right, the first CCIA was not that case, right? The second CCIA, and I think, pardon me, thinks it's a fluke, but, it, it was that case, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I knew it was more of an academic exam. I knew it was very similar to route switch and, and how things were delivered. And then I also knew that if I fail, I can't take it again anyway because it's going to be a completely different exam. So I think the lack of stress about worrying about pass, pass, pass really made a huge difference. So it goes back to you hear about mindset all the time, you know. That's 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 a maturity thing as well, though, right? Because it's all down yeah. to the approach and, and whatever that you take. I know um, I know Derek's fav favorite thing is is talking about the passion that you've got to have for what you do, right? And yeah. mate, it's very clear that you have that passion. But I think it's something that's shared. No, but it's something that's shared by by all the people on this call 
you know we're not we, we, we're not perhaps as million miles an hour about it but without that passion and an interest in what we do no one will get anywhere here so and and i think it's you know in our last video we talked about that that to to, to a great extent and i think we will we just, just slow this interview back down to like half speed <laughs> <laughs>